Looking at this picture, you could sense something went wrong here. The three questions were probably be what, why, and how. As in what is happening here, when the vehicle supposed to be on a straight course rather took a cough path. Why this happened and how to correct it and hopefully prevent it from happening will be the focus of this video. Now the why part of the question centers on stability. Stability in rockets refers to the ability of the vehicle to maintain a straight course in flight. Stability is determined by a stability margin and the real exit velocity. The important parameter one needs to understand are the center of pressure. The point on the rocket where the aerodynamic forces are balanced. The most common way to calculate this is the use of the barometer equation. Now you might want to search for how to use the barometer equation. The biggest factor in the calculation of CP are the length of the rocket, the size, the shape and the location of the fins. The purpose of having fins on the rocket is to bring back the center of pressure further back on the rocket. If the barometer equation looks somewhat intimidating, the high conservative ways of determining CP suggest the following. That you want to place the rocket on, the, on a cardboard. Now draw and cut out its outline as shown here. Now place it on a knife edge wherever it balances that gives you the center of pressure. Now next is by hanging two strings, three feet apart. Bring the two free hanging ends to the common point to form the letter V. Then add a three inch rope to now look like the letter Y. Attach the rocket at its balance point and swing it to and fro. Whichever way it behaves will determine how the rocket will come down to just nose force, the tail, or horizontally. The next parameter is the center of gravity or CG, the point on the rocket where the mass of the rocket is balanced. This is also the point where the rocket will rotate or pivot when subjected to aerodynamic forces. The distance between CG and CP must be one body diameter for rocket stability to be accomplished. And you can influence this by adding weight to the nose cone or larger fins. This is the stability margin. Mathematically, the stability margin is the distance between CG and CB CP divided by the airframe diameter. For example, you are flying a rocket of a maximum diameter of 3 inches. Your CG will need to be at least 3 inches in front of your CP, giving one caliber of stability or stability margin of 1. Now here is another conservative method of determining stability using center of gravity, called the swing test. After obtaining its balance point on a knife edge, I tie a rope at the balance point itself. As you could see, the nose keep pointing forward as I swing it around me, a positive indication of stability. Now the final method on stability is by placing the rocket on a movable pivot at its balance point CG. Now here I'm blowing compressed air with the help of a PC blower directly at the nose cone representing the relative wind. Noticing minor vibrations but the vehicle keeps its nose facing forward without tipping over. Another important factor for stable flying is the speed at which the rocket leaves the launch rail. This is the rail exit velocity. Remember the launch rail keeps the rocket in a vertical configuration while the rocket is accelerated into a speed at which the fins cause the CP to be driven behind CG and keeps the rocket stable. The exact speed is hard to quantify and varies based on the rocket size, mass, and fin shape. The rule of thumb is 50 feet per second, the speed without the help of a launch wheel. Rail exit velocity can be increased by using a motor with a higher initial thrust or by using a longer launch rail. A safe exit velocity is a factor you must know before attempting to fire your vehicle. A rocket simulator can help determine this, but you could also use high school physics equation to figure it out. My solid rocket motor will load it weight 1,632 grams of propeller, so I'm assuming a minimum thrust of 200 newtons. Now to find its exit velocity, you have to weight the rocket with the motor divided by the total weight of the rocket. Now, I happen to do that and obtain a total mass of 2,619 grams. Now converting it into kilograms, I got 2.6 kilograms. Now using Newton's second law of motion, F equals to MA, A equals to F over M, gives me 200 over 2.6. Now I happen to get 76.923 meters per second, uh, which is approximately 77 meters square, which is the acceleration. Now we also have to calculate the amount of time between the ignition of the motor and when the vehicle leaves the path. To determine this time, we use the equation D equal to V initial times time plus half AT square. 
uh, D is the effective length of a launch rail. If the length of the rail minus the distance between the two rail buttons to the rock, one launch pod measures 154 centimeters, and the distance between the two rail buttons is about 46 centimeters. When subtracted, giving a value of 108 centimeters to meters, 1.08 meters. Now V is the initial velocity, which is zero in this case, since the rocket started at rest. Since initial velocity is zero, time nulls out, leaving the equation D is equal to half, half the acceleration multiplied by time square. Doing a change of subject gives us time, time square equal to 2D divided by acceleration. Simplify this becomes time square equal to square root of 2D divided by acceleration. Substituting in our values, we have t equal to square root of 2 multiplied by 1.08 meters divided by 77 meters per second, giving a time value of 0.1732 seconds. Now, these values now help us to determine the exit rail velocity. Given this equation, we can calculate the exit rail velocity. Acceleration equals the final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. Remember, initial velocity is still zero. Since the rocket begins at rest, we can rearrange the equation to become final velocity equals acceleration multiplied by time. Final velocity equals 77 meters per second multiplied by 0.2 seconds, giving us 15.4 meters per second. Finally, we need to convert this value from meters per second to feet per second to see if we meet our minimum requirement of 50 meters per second. To convert our final velocity of 15.4 meters per second, we'll multiply times the conversion factor one mile for every 16,900 meters times 5,280 feet for every mile. This gives us 50.5 meters per second, which is the exact value itself. But note that the 200 Newton that I picked is just an assumed value. My homemade rock, solid rocket motor will definitely perform greater than this, and I will verify this when static firing commands. Now, thrust to weight ratio is another concern, and it's recommended to have a thrust at least five times the weight of the rocket. This is easy to calculate with the information below. 1 kilogram equals to 9.8 newtons, 2.6 kilograms equals to 25.48 newtons. The thrust 200 newtons divided by the weight 25.48 newtons gives a value of 7.85. This means that we have a thrust to weight ratio of 7.85 to 1, which is well above the safety minimum value of 5 to 1. So thanks for watching. See you next time.